According to Dr. Christian G. Anderson, an early skeptic of a natural origin for the novel coronavirus, but who had rather abruptly, within a span of just a few short days, moved to describing such theories that had been shared by some 28% of Americans by April 2020 as crackpot conspiracies, an opinion, according to survey analysts at the Pew Research Center, held most strongly by those who lack advanced educational attainments. Detailed understanding of how an animal virus jumped species boundaries to infect humans so productively will help in the prevention of future zoonotic events. This was the official position of Dr. Anderson by April 2020, a position upon which he would later amplify in September 2021, over a year and a half later, agreeing with over 20 other scientists that failure to comprehensively investigate the zoonotic origin through collaborative and carefully coordinated studies would leave the world vulnerable to future pandemics arising from the same human activities that have repeatedly put us on a collision course with novel viruses. Around that same time in April 2020, according to the Pew Research Center, misinformation about the COVID-19 pandemic had spread and many Americans had encountered conflicting narratives about how the new coronavirus originated. And yet, over a year later, in May 2021, according to the American president, the U.S. intelligence community had coalesced around only two likely scenarios, but had not reached a definitive conclusion on this question. Described thusly, while two elements in the IC lean toward the former scenario, and one leans more toward the latter, each with low or moderate confidence. The majority of elements do not believe there is sufficient information yet to assess one to be more likely than the other. Prompting a 90-day task to redouble efforts to discover which of the two scenarios was more likely. And even today, according to reporters at the Wall Street Journal, more than three years after the start of the global pandemic, there has yet to be a comprehensive forensic investigation into its origins. With more than a million Americans dead from COVID-19 and an estimated 15 million dead worldwide, that's inexcusable, they say. According to the Wall Street Journal, even today, some believe the novel coronavirus probably escaped from a laboratory in Wuhan. Others maintain the virus first jumped to people from caged animals at a Wuhan seafood market. What is the truth? Yet, according to the BBC, in July 2020, traces of COVID-19 had been found in sewage samples from Spain, Italy, and Brazil, which predated its discovery in China. A preprint study, which has not yet been peer-reviewed, claims to have found presence of SARS-CoV-2 genomes in a Barcelona sewage sample from 12 March 2019. And the global study regarding the origins of the novel coronavirus completed by the World Health Organization in February 2021, just before the first anniversary of the pandemic, had confirmed that fact. Indeed, traces of the novel coronavirus had been found in sewage samples in Barcelona some six months before apparently a once-in-a-lifetime condition had coincided to set off a global pandemic that lingers today. A curious set of coincidences that now even Dr. Anderson claims was not just a single but a double zoonotic evolution in the vicinity of the Wuhan wet market, and from which it appears to be the elderly, over age 65, with at least four comorbidities to have been found to be the most vulnerable, accounting for over 90% of the American fatalities. Just as at the beginning of the public health crisis, 1,800 teams of at least five epidemiologists from the World Health Organization had not only concluded to be the most vulnerable to the lethal effects of the novel coronavirus, but had also advised expressly almost a year before the availability of the amazingly safe and effective vaccines. There are guidelines for elderly care, specifically targeting prevention in individuals 
and guidelines for elderly care, specifically targeting prevention in individuals and introduction of COVID-19 to nursing homes, identifying expressly the elderly as the most vulnerable age cohort, a topic raised in litigation against the nation's only physician serving as a state governor during the pandemic, and litigation that made not even one mention in the news story, and litigation that Dr. Ralph Northam, MD, had in April 2021 moved to dismiss after successfully evading service of the complaint for the sheriff for the city of Alexandria, which would suggest that undoubtedly they knew the tale of the tonics to which they had placed their signatures. As was said by the Attorney General for Israel during the 1961 trial of Adolf Eichmann, after his capture and extradition from Argentina, where he had escaped for some 15 years, and on the anniversary of the pandemic declaration, the American president had assured us all that we know what to do to beat this virus. Tell the truth. Follow the scientists and the science. Work together. Put trust and faith in our government to fulfill its most important function, which is protecting the American people. No function more important. Follow the scientists and the science. In this video series, we have explored a variety of subjects related to the origins of the novel coronavirus which Burgess Sorensen, Andrus Susrud, and Angus George Deglish had observed what they had described as an ideology or origin cause that was apparently quite singular, unique, strange, and about which they had believed the logical course was to address this phenomenon through developing a clear understanding of an elusive problem about which even the WHO director had lamented to the United Nations at the end of December 2021 as the amazing and effective vaccines were finally being made available saying surely we have learned by now that we underestimate this virus at our peril. Even Dr. Rochelle Walensky has said this virus isn't stupid while Dr. Anthony Fauci has admitted that this virus has fooled us before. And in the last segment, we had the option to engage in what intelligence analysts describe as an association matrix analysis, identifying trace contacts or close associates of the person that had been identified earlier as America's most trusted voice in separating fact from fiction. And far more than the controversial British zoologist Peter Daszak in a nodes analysis, also conducted by intelligence analysts, the name that most often arose when asking the pivotal question, who is the last found to be playing with the coronaviruses, was that of one Ralph Barrick, the author of several reports on work with recombinant and chimeric coronaviruses before the pandemic and applying for patent protection, seriously, within a reasonable time just before not only the emergence of the novel coronavirus that affects the world now and remains unresolved, but also its close cousins, SARS and MERS, raising at least a reasonable suspicion as to why he happened to be the last one playing with coronaviruses before suddenly outbreaks appear throughout the world. But in this segment, the critical question that had curiously remained just as elusive as the still unknown zoonotic source about which some 1,800 teams of at least five epidemiologists who had investigated the outbreak in China had concluded since the COVID-19 virus has a genome identity of 96% to a bat SARS-like coronavirus and 86 to 92% to a pangolin SARS-like coronavirus, an animal source for COVID-19 is highly likely. Pangolin and bat would certainly conform to the description of a chimeric coronavirus about which Barrick's works had been concerned when he had applied for a patent for method for reproducing recombinant coronaviruses in 2002, just one year before the emergence of SARS in Hong Kong, and during which his application had stated a helper cell for producing an infectious replication defective coronavirus or more generally needle virus. Particle cell comprises A, a nidovirus permissive cell, B, a nidovirus replicon RNA comprising the nidovirus 
packaging signal and a heterologous RNA sequence, wherein the replicon RNA further lacks a sequence encoding at least one nidovirus structural protein and see at least one separate helper RNA encoding the at least one structural protein absent from the replicon RNA, the helper RNAs lacking the nidovirus packaging signal. And within just a year after his pioneering work in science, that low to moderate risk of a potentially dangerous biohazard would indeed erupt, as Karen Sullivan had described in the Public Health Journal contemporaneously. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS, emerged recently as a new infectious disease that was transmitted efficiently in the healthcare setting and particularly affected healthcare workers, HCWs, patients, and visitors. The efficiency of transmission within healthcare facilities was recognized following significant hospital outbreaks of SARS in Canada, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, and Vietnam. The causative agent of SARS was identified as a novel coronavirus, the SARS coronavirus, an outbreak intriguingly self-limiting to nosocomial infecting settings, hospitals, and finding no wider community spread. A signature characteristic of later infections arising from its closest relatives MERS as well as SARS, COV2, and prompting deeper inquiry regarding the true nature of what has popularly been described as a highly contagious disease, despite not finding even one trace contact study being able to validate a secondary attack rate of at least 60%. In fact, when examining some 139 household trace contact studies of the Omicron variant, a report recently published in the Journal of American Medical Association had found only a 43% secondary attack rate under the most optimal conditions for human-to-human -human transmission, or as reporters at The Atlantic had described the findings, a person would have a better chance at winning a coin toss than catching the Omicron variant, the most transmissible variant yet from their cohabitating roommate, lover, spouse, family member, or significant other, which does not conform even to the anecdotal definition of a highly contagious disease, an anomaly that had spawned a request for information to the White House in March 2021 under the Freedom of Information Act to determine whether or not this standard metric for transmissibility risk was in fact classified information because the public presentation had appeared to defy any conventional understanding of the etiology and nature of this novel coronavirus, especially since the works of Martin Blazer in 1982. It has been known, in, at least in the scientific community, that a super spreader event, as have been alleged to have occurred throughout the pandemic, would have required it as a prerequisite the presence of a highly contagious disease validated highly contagious disease, which would satisfy the threshold of at least 60% in secondary attack rate, the secondary attack rate of the validated highly contagious disease smallpox. Yet upon examination of some 55,924 laboratory confirmed cases in China, 19 times more cases examined than had yet been reported in the entire United States by mid-March 2020, some 1,800 teams of at least five epidemiologists had found a secondary attack rate of under 5%, ranging between 0.9% and 4.8%, 12 times too low to validate the presence of a disease being transmitted from person to person, and prompting the conclusion, the clinical conclusion, by those epidemiologists that it is not clear whether this correlates with the presence of an infectious virus. A binding revalidated in October 2020 in the largest sample size trace contact study performed to date on that original strain. Over 3 million laboratory confirmed cases in India that found only a secondary attack rate of 4.6%. And if so, such a virus could neither escape from a laboratory or zoonotically evolve into a pandemic, as on all evidence has occurred resulting in what the Wall Street Journal has estimated to have caused over 15 million fatalities worldwide, a figure exceeding the official total record recorded by the World Health Organization by at least twofold, and even eclipsing the works of Adolf Hitler in two years of a Holocaust. The American president has said, we know what we need to do to beat this virus, tell the truth follow the scientists and the science. 
And so adhering to an inductive scientific method rather than deductive and based upon examination of empirical observations to infer general conclusions and engaged in the resolution of anomalies, the business of science, according to Thomas Kuhn, professor of the philosophy of science at Harvard University years ago. At least Martin Blazer had posited that the other metric of risk that might give rise to a super spread event, which has been alleged to have been the impetus for lockdowns and closures of churches, businesses and schools, social distancing, masks, will be found in a sufficiently low infectious dose, which at least according to Jean Maguire Van Seventer and Natasha S. Hockburn in the International Encyclopedia of Public Health 2nd Edition should not exceed 15 particles, just 15 particles like chickenpox, a validated highly contagious disease with a secondary attack rate of 90%, one of the most highly contagious diseases known to mankind. With which, curiously, Dr. Rochelle Walensky had compared to the Delta variant upon its emergence, which should have precluded the emergence of an even more transmissible variant being at the wall. But as had been reported upon the emergence of the Omicron variant in South Africa in November 2021, unless that new emerging variant of concern, Omicron, had attained the practically impossible rate of 100% in secondary attack rate. Everyone exposed to the virus is infected, which clearly has not found any evidence, therefore, as of yet. And yet, according to the CDC, as of their latest update on May 7, 2021, the infectious dose of SARS-CoV-2 needed to transmit infection has not yet been established. Following this logical methodology and scientific-based inquiry that had been proposed by Martin Blazer in 1982, it would reasonably appear that although extraordinarily rare in expectation, the key to understanding the presentation of a novel coronavirus might be found in determining the in exact infectious dose, which somehow departs from what one would expect from just simple observation of the secondary attack rate. And apparently a determination about which within the scientific community the protocols had been established by Robert Koch, the discoverer of the bacteria that causes the highly contagious tuberculosis which requires only an infectious dose of just 10 particles in 1870 when he had turned his inquiries to the causative biological agent for anthrax disease to develop what scientists describe as coaches postulates, the validation of just four simple propositions to include a step to determine the infectious dose required to set off a disease condition like COVID-19. In Sesame Street Simplicity, the how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop test? But which, for whatever reason, was not a priority even with the declaration of a pandemic, as neither were following up on trace contacts, the methodology that the CDC had hailed as the key to disrupting the spread of the Ebola virus in Zaire. And apparently, as early as April 2020, such a challenge study had been proposed in the United Kingdom, selecting some 34 young subjects to have a novel coronavirus introduced to their upper respiratory tract, intubated with the novel coronavirus through their nostrils. And as reported by the Washington Post in May 2022, over a year later, over two years later, Thanks to the volunteers, researchers learned some fascinating details about viral loads, symptoms, and incubation times. A paper on the findings was published in Nature Journal on March 31st of that year, two years into a pandemic, and over one year after the amazingly safe and effective vaccines had been developed and distributed worldwide. But at least according to many in the scientific community, Knowledge of the infectious doses, prerequisite knowledge to develop an effective vaccine. 
without the requirement for a large sample size phase 3 clinical trial in which apparently over 80% of Americans have volunteered to participate. According to Berger Sorensen, Andres Sustrud, and Angus George Daglish, who had apparently pioneered the effort to develop a complete understanding of the etiology of the novel coronavirus that appeared to them to possess an etiology that they had described as quite particular. Unlike conventionally developed vaccines in the pandemic, their product, BioVac-19 method of operation, is upon non-human-like NHL epitopes in 21.6% of the composition of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, which displays distinct distributed charge, including the presence of a charged furin-like cleavage site. 21.6% of the composition of the spike protein for SARS-CoV-2 is non-human, but it has a unique adaptability to human physiology and which displays a distinct distributed charge, including the presence of charged furin-like cleavage site, suggesting the presence of some ionization component about which John Lednicki, the holder of a patent for PCR tests, incidentally, had implied may have contributed to a unique gain of function, enabling the burials measuring between just 0.25 and 0.5 microns to defy computational fluid dynamics massing in the air to maximize delivery of an infectious dose not against an area target subjected to a normalized random distribution of particles but rather upon a point target creating the ability the extraordinary ability to deliver a potentially lethal payload to its target host and with sufficient exposure one might assume possess the ability to defeat even industrial and military grade respiratory protection and if, as has been conceded by the CDC, the primary transmission for COVID-19 is performed through aerosol transmission, not droplets. Aerosols have the ability to persist in the air for up to two hours, even after a potentially infected person has departed the room. And the N95 mask, the product of choice for healthcare workers, can only remain effective against tear gas for up to an hour. And this is the protection that was recommended during a global public health crisis for safety. Not to mention those who believed in the ludicrous proposition of the impervious qualities of one ply cotton against microbial penetration. When the smallest configuration unit of tear gas is still six times larger than the largest SARS-CoV-2 particle measuring 1.4 microns. And Faye Flam. A reporter for Bloomberg Business Journal wrote in May 2022 about the 34 volunteers for the challenge study. At the time, nobody knew how long it would take to get vaccines tested and approved. Challenge trials have been used to study malaria and influenza and look like a possible shortcut to speed up arrival of a COVID-19 vaccine. For me, the experience would have led to a series of great stories Journalists do far more dangerous things for work. And apparently, Miss Flam, a Bloomberg opinion columnist and host of the podcast, Follow the Science, who has written for The Economist, The New York Times, The Washington Post, Psychology Today, Science, and other publications, was wholly unaware of the work conducted by John Lipnicki in preprint at first in January 2021 who, as a scientist, was aware that there was no need to risk the lives of 34 volunteers at all any longer because of advancements in biomedical research, with which E6 Bureau cells could be used to replace 
the requirement for human guinea pigs in a child study. According to Christian Anderson, regarding this uniquely adapted to human physiology coronavirus, both the polybasic cleavage site and three adjacent predicted O-linked glycons are unique to SARS-CoV-2 and were not previously seen in lineage B beta coronaviruses. Suddenly appearing in just this virus. And since the year 2002, one Ralph Barrick had been working on recombinant coronaviruses even before coronaviruses appear to have posed a threat to mankind and just one year before the emergence of SARS COB in Hong Kong in 2003, which would be a finding that is indeed quite singular for this novel coronavirus alleged to have been zoonotically evolved, the preferred opinion by those with sufficient academic attainments, like college and advanced degrees, not given to uninformed opinions on a topic about which Justice John John Marshall Holland had stated in Jacobson v. Massachusetts, the infamous smallpox vaccines case decided by the Supreme Court in 1905 that the only competent evidence that could be presented to the court to prove these propositions was the testimony of experts giving their opinions. And how many scientific reports have you read under the evolutionary pressure of a lethal pandemic that the WHO estimates has claimed the lives of over 6.8 million worldwide. In March 2020, writing for The Conversation, Beth Daly wrote, in December 2019, only 27 of the first 41 people hospitalized, 66% passed away market located in the heart of Wuhan City in Hubei province. Only 41 cases had been known in China by January 14th, 2020, despite an emergence alleged in December 2019, but according to a study conducted at Wuhan Hospital, the very first case identified did not frequent this market. And getting the virus, as Bruce Aylward has said, the assistant director of Paul Who, is a function of coming into contact with someone with the virus. Instead, a molecular dating estimate based on the SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequences indicates an origin in November was her conclusion in the conversation in March 2020 and she posited that this raises questions about the link between this COVID-19 epidemic and wildlife. According to a preprint published in June 2020 in early December 2019, COVID-19 originated in Wuhan, China, and reached thereafter many parts of the world, including Europe, where the first case was reported in France in late January 2020. However, evidence points to the occurrence of cases in France already in late 2019. According to the World Health Organization, after a robust examination of acute respiratory illness, or ARI and influenza-like illness or ILI data dating back to September 2019. The very first case of infection in China did not occur until December 8, 2019. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And as reported in the New York Times, the very first fatality in China did not occur until January 10, 2020. At which time medical authorities in China could not validate that COVID-19 was an infectious disease being transmitted from person to person at all. A disease that would, upon its outbreak, by mid-February 2020, would find families, farming families, appear to drive infection, suggesting a potential genetic component. Farming families in the largest city in the central mainland of China, but also, coincidentally, the political opposition in a transitioning industrial economy described as the Detroit of China. 
And according to the report first published at the end of March 2022 by Ben Killingsley, regarding the challenge study for which selection had begun in the United Kingdom in April 2020, two years into a lethal pandemic, to establish a novel SARS-CoV-2 human challenge model that enables controlled investigation of pathogenesis, correlates of protection, and efficacy testing of forthcoming interventions, 36 volunteers aged 18 to 29 years, youthful subjects, without evidence of previous infection or vaccination, were inoculated with 10 TCID50, or infectious dose of a wild type virus SARS-CoV-2 human GBR484861 2020 intranasally in an open label non-randomized study and according to their findings from the total of 36 research experiment participants only 18 about half became infected with viral load BL rising steeply and peaking at about five days after inoculation. Just around 50%, which is less than the threshold of 60% to validate the presence of a highly contagious disease. And after being subjected to a challenge study in which the virus had been intranasally subjected to the participants, which by clinical definition would not be a highly contagious disease for at least half based upon this small sample of subjects were totally immune natural immunity and according to this challenge study viable virus was recoverable from the nose up to 10 days after inoculation on average there were no serious adverse events mild to moderate symptoms were reported by 16 89 percent infected participants beginning two to four days after inoculation two to four day incubate incubatory period consistent with other findings whereas two 11 percent participants remained asymptomatic no reportable symptoms which are distinct from signs asymptomatic signs of infection anosmia or loss of smell or diosmia or olfactory sense distortions developed more slowly in 15 83 percent of participants representing a clear majority of those who had even managed to have been infected at all. And following the scientists like Christian Anderson, we have been led to believe that this virus that had been uncovered in sewage samples in Spain, Italy, and Brazil, which predate its discovery in China, had somehow discovered in December 2019 the optimal conditions to set off a global public health crisis involving a highly contagious disease that a challenge study failed to validate that had been conducted over a period of two years into a pandemic in which according to the Wall Street Journal it is estimated that over 15 million people worldwide have died and you look like an intelligent person while the intelligence community has coalesced around only two possible scenarios an escape from the lab in Wuhan, presumptively, or a zoonotic evolution in Wuhan when suddenly ideal conditions were created for this threat to no one, even in Barcelona in March 2019, had suddenly become a threat to all of mankind. On January 31st, 2020, in an email to Dr. Anthony Fauci, similarly, Dr. Christian G. Anderson of Scripps Research Center had written the unusual features of the virus make up a really small part of the genome, less than 0.1%, so as to look really closely at all the sequences to see that some of the features potentially look engineered. Dr. Anderson added, Eddie, Bob, Mike, and myself all find the genome inconsistent with expectations from evolutionary theory. Four scientists examining the genome electron microscopes, not just persons with uninformed opinions, had concluded that the genome was inconsistent with the expectation of evolutionary theory. Be you a creationist or evolutionary scientist, biologist, and upon receipt of this critical email before Dr. Anderson would soon reverse his position to become the leading advocate regarding the zoonotic evolution theory, 
Dr. Anthony Fauci had transmitted to his deputy, Dr. Hugh Auchincloss, an email marked as urgent and stating with emotion, it is essential that we speak this AM. Read this paper as well as the email I will forward to you now. You will have tasks that must be done today, a Saturday, for a government employee. According to Al Jazeera, Anthony S. Fauci, MD, has become the trusted voice in the United States in separating fact and fiction. And in July 2021, abruptly he had announced plans to retire by the end of President Joe Biden's current term in office. The government's top infectious disease expert told CNN. And that month, around that time, Dr. Anthony Fauci, now retired, the most highly compensated federal employee, who shall be inevitably the most highly compensated retired employee. I keep an open mind and say that we should consider all possibilities until we definitively prove one, he said. But I, together with many highly qualified vaccinologists and virologists, I mean including a recent paper by 21 internationally renowned virologists and evolutionary biologists from all over the world, indicate that although we keep an open mind, that it's possible, entirely possible, that it could be, as they say, elaborate that the most likely explanation is a natural evolution from an animal reservoir to a human. Once you say that, which I believe is more likely, you've got to make sure you emphasize that you still keep an open mind for all possibilities, including the lab leak from a virus that any competent and credible virologist Vaccinologists, microbiologists would conclude lack the capability with a less than five percent in less than five percent secondary attack rate to set off either a super spreader event or escape from a lab on its own. Would that level of suspicion rise of a person of far more formal education, including college or even an advanced degree? Were they to consider that the same Ralph Barrick had on April 19, 2002, almost two decades before the current pandemic, involving the novel coronavirus, which at least according to AG possesses the chimerically aberrant from nature characteristic of an opinion called a nuisance bias or a snake of affinity, even though coronaviruses are exclusive and infections to only mammals and birds, had made application for a patent for methods for producing recombinant coronavirus. Just one year before, not only the SARS outbreak in Hong Kong, but also the year in which suddenly not only human coronaviruses were discovered in 1965, more akin to chicken coronaviruses, a marginal co-infecting agent in the common cold, had given rise between 2003 and 2005 to the emergence of a total of five new human coronaviruses, including SARS, all related to the same bat in Yunnan, the location of a military-grade virology laboratory rarely if ever discussed in news accounts and now making up to as much as 30% of our common cold, a $40 billion industry in the United States alone. By July 2020, according to Pew Research Center, most Americans, 71%, had heard of a conspiracy theory circulating widely online that had alleged that powerful people intentionally planned the coronavirus outbreak and a quarter of U.S. adults saw at least some truth in it including 5% and who said it is definitely true and 20% who said it is probably true, according to a June 2020 Pew Research Center survey. But if they had these suspicions in natural selection under evolutionary pressure, purportedly the success model of a novel coronavirus, single strand of RNA without any sentient capability, conquered the world. Did they read even one science report to get the facts? According to the Pew Research Center in July 2020, however, the share of Americans who saw at least some truth to the theory differed by demographics and partisanship. Driven by partisanship on a science exam. And let, at least according to these learned survey researchers, educational attainment is an especially important factor when it came to perceptions of the conspiracy theory. Around half of Americans with a high school diploma or less education, 48%, said the theory is probably or definitely true regarding a laboratory origin. 
but they emphasize that that compares with 38% of those who had completed some college but have no degree, 24% of those with a bachelor's degree, and 15% of those with a postgraduate degree, with the implication that if you had believed the conspiracy theories at all, crackpot conspiracy theories, it would probably be because you lack sufficient education and further should probably not be granted much weight for your uninformed opinions. At the end of December 2021, the WHO director had told the United Nations that surely we have learned by now that we underestimate this virus and our own peril. I believe it's one of the most ghostly manifestations that I have ever seen. Whether it is real or simply conjecture, one of those things that people are seeking to find some mystery to fool themselves into believing, but with some other perfectly rational cause, is a question that only you can answer with your capacity to reason and discern. Impossible. So was Xeroxing and holography in just a few short years ago. In fact, so were videotape replays like the ones you are watching right now. People have been proclaiming the marvels of science for thousands of years, and maybe one day we shall finally discover the origins of this novel coronavirus. What a tremendous gain that would be for science, and what a tragic loss, however, for storytelling. Be sure to join us next time as we continue with the events evolving in science in a near-ending pandemic termination that has, as of yet, with an estimated 15 million dead worldwide leaves still many unanswered questions, including exactly how this virus that isn't stupid had without a prescient, sentient thought, and merely through natural selection, managed so quickly and absolutely to have conquered the entire world in just a short span of time over rational and superior mankind. This briefing is unclassified. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.